Not so long ago, the southern state of Georgia was a lock for conservative white Republicans. Georgia has seen plenty of change. It's now a majority-minority state. Black voters are still the biggest segment of the minority electorate, but in tight races, every vote counts. It's looking viable as a true toss-up. The, the, the prediction markets and various polls all point to a razor-thin finish. So which voters could be key to clinching victory in this all-important swing state? Our special correspondent, Joey Chen, takes us to Gwinnett County in Georgia. It's not that much of a stretch to say that somewhere in this Monday morning chair yoga crowd may be the voter whose ballot will help tip the scales this November. It might be 100-year-old So Song In. Everybody go to vote. That's the power for people. Or maybe 80-year-old Ku Hong Ja. Her friends call her happy. Is it important to vote? Interesting and very important. These AAPI, Asian American Pacific Islander voters in suburban Atlanta, know their votes are crucial both to the presidential contest and down-ballot races this year. So important that activists and candidates now make regular stops at the Joinus Senior Center. <laughs> Korean-American voting rights advocate James Wu is back for the second time in just a month. AAPIs are like a voting bloc that both parties cannot miss. Georgia's AAPI population has ballooned over the last 20 years, driven by a huge influx of Korean and South Asian Indian immigrants. Many brought memories of repressive governments with them to their new lives as American citizens. They came to, from a country where they had to literally fight for democracy, right? Or they had to flee the country because there wasn't a, uh, like a true democracy in the country. So I think a lot of them really value the importance of making their voices heard. Today, foreign-born and native AAPIs together make up just over 4% of Georgia's electorate. But recent elections show they can have an outsized impact. There are 93,000 South Asian voters in Georgia. In 2020, the uh, president and the vice president won the state with about 12,000 votes. And about 70% of the voters who turned out voted for the Biden-Harris ticket. So in a lot of ways, that community really helped power uh, that victory. AAPI advocates and researchers say signs point to this being another banner year. Kartik Ramakrishnan studies AAPI voting trends. Now we're seeing levels of voter enthusiasm that are on par with what we saw in 2020. And let's remember 2020 was a record turnout year. So if we're looking ahead in a state like Georgia, we would expect to see record high turnout among Asian Americans and to see Asian Americans once again tipping the balance towards one side or another. Ramakrishnan emphasizes AAPIs alone aren't enough to make the difference in this majority-minority state. Black voters are still key, but... If that's in place, then absolutely Asian Americans can help provide the margin of victory. Advocates have launched an unprecedented effort to reach AAPI voters. We're going to do in-person phone banking to... APIA Vote, a nonpartisan civic engagement organization, will reach nearly 2 million AAPIs with voting materials in 18 languages. You're all set with the API Georgia Hub. Most AAPIs vote early or by mail, partly to avoid language hurdles. But this year in Georgia, that may be more difficult. There's going to be a lot more scrutiny, and so we need to do a lot more education to our voters in terms of making sure that they cross all T's and dot all I's. Georgia's AAPI voters include many small business owners with predictable interest in the economy. But since the Atlanta area health spa murders, polls find their number one concern is racism and anti-Asian violence. What it means is that candidates who engage in racially divisive rhetoric are unlikely to earn the support of Asian American voters. Back at the senior center, the Halmonis and Hal Abojis, the Korean grandmas and grandpas, offer the best flavors of the old country and the best lessons of the new. Participate in elections, make a better country. A reminder of the power newcomers have as they grow their community. In Norcross, Georgia, I'm Joey Chen for Matter of Fact. 
Next week, our series takes us to North Carolina. In addition to dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, it's the most rural of the battleground states. The rural vote matters. It's going to determine the outcome of our elections. And the experiences of voters living in small town and rural places is obviously really important. The challenges of turning out the vote in this all-important swing state when some of those voters live far apart and a long way from the polls.